The first win ever by a number 16 seed over a number one seed. And Megan Basil's song, class of 98, and I was a, a senior and co-captain on the Harvard women's basketball team, which made history as the first 16th seed in NCAA history, men's or women's, to upset a one seed. And I'm so excited to take a walk down memory lane with my friend and teammate and twin in life as we share the same birthday and year. Susie Miller. Hello, thanks Megan. And hello, Harvard basketball fans. Excited to be here today. My name is Susie Miller, I'm class of 99 and I was fortunate enough to be on the team. So Megan, my main memories of this whole wonderful event, which I love that we're talking about, how many years later? <laughs> Try not to think about that. Um, is the NCAA selection show because we'd been through this a couple times, right? We'd won two Ivy League championships. We played Vanderbilt one year and then North Carolina the next. And with with Marion Jones. Good um, point. Fastest woman fastest. in the world. <laughs> and a pretty good basketball player. We'd been here before and we were at the selection show at Kathy's gorgeous home. And what do you remember from that night? You know, I, I remember us all in silly t-shirts, All we all had matching t-shirts on and we were all cuddled together in, in Kathy's living room. And, you know, I, I suppose we should, we should pause for one second as we, we get into to women's basketball, right? There, you can't have a conversation without the incredible leadership of Kathy Delaney Smith. Without Kathy Delaney Smith, there is no conversation here. Um, and this would have been what her 39th season. This this canceled season would have been her 39th season, which in and of itself is remarkable. But those decades of of building this community of of strong women, and I hope she coaches till she's a hundred, so more young women wow. get to experience get to experience her her leadership her mentorship and and her friendship and you know trish brown and steph pemper rounding out that coaching staff it was the dream team of coaches and so going into this selection show we all we all talk kathy has this mantra this act as if in you know mind over matter on your worst day you act as if it's your best and so we all went in here ready for this selection show where we had proven ourselves. We had Allison Feaster, another name you cannot omit when discussing Harvard women's basketball, arguably the best female athlete to come through, not only Harvard, but the Ivy League. And I, I think we were expecting better than a 16th seed. Oh, I mean, it was brutal. I remember, I, I remember this better than I think I remember the game. I was sitting on the floor in the front and it came up on the screen and I don't even remember who it said we were playing. I just saw the 16th seed and looked at Kathy's face and was like, oh, I just, it was that face she puts on before she says, run, <laughs> line up, line up. <laughs> line up. That's right. And yeah, I, it, it was interesting because she had to act as if that night. Um, but it was like the air was let out of the room and none of us really knew what to do. And it, it was really quite demoralizing. And I think for people who don't realize how good we really were and what our expectations were, it wasn't to get to the NCAA. It's, it was, we've been there twice. Let's get there and move on. Let's get out of the first round. Let's move forward. So yeah. it was really pretty demoralizing. Um, and but we got through it and the dream team of coaches, I think is very well said that trio was remarkable. Um, and I just remember them putting everything they had in preparing us, uh, the heavy metal music to get ready for a crowd that we'd never seen before. Well, because we all love Levitis Pavilion, our home court, which was our home for four years. It's a stunning stadium after the after the uh, after the renovation. It's beautiful, but that is a a court that seats, I believe, it's sixteen thirty six, like the year Harvard was started. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, so in a you know on our you know 
biggest crowd days. We were playing to, to fewer than 2,000 people. And I think their stadium had over well over 5,000. So just the, the noise and the sound, and not to mention that floor. Do you remember how bizarre their spring suspension? It, it was so bizarre how their floor moved and bounced. Yeah, and it's interesting that they brought that up to us, right? We had to be prepared for noise and crowd. We had to be prepared for a bouncy floor. And so they really, how do you get ready for a bouncy floor? You don't. But they definitely got us ready for the noise. And don't you remember practicing these with these flashcards, which became famous in, we will get to that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I just remember going to practice and being like, really, we have to listen to this again? But in the end, I think it may have um, really helped us. The only part of the lead up though that got to me a little bit was that first shoot around where we got to experience the floor. I did not like the floor. Um, <laughs> and it, I mean, look at me, I have name, I can count on one hand how many times I drove to the basket. I was a come off a screen, shoot a jump shot player. And so I could not hit a jump shot. And I remember going to Trish Brown and saying, I can't hit a shot. Uh, I'm worried. And she was just like, it'll be fine. And she was like my therapist. She would just say, catch and shoot, catch and shoot, catch and shoot. So I just kept saying to that, to that to myself, just catch and shoot, don't worry about it. But I did walk out of that, that walk around, um, shoot around, I should say, a bit concerned. And, and remember in the buildup, you know, the press kind of turned it into the battle of the brains. And, um, you know, we, for once, we just wanted to be basketball players, you know, take that out of it. Just think of us as basketball players. So there was the battle of the brains. There was a time difference. Remember, that was a big deal. This was also 98. And so none of us had cell phones. No one had cable. So for for our friends and classmates and, and families, many of whom made the, the trek out there. But for anyone to see this game, it was staying up quite late and, and getting access to ESPN, which was not an easy thing on, on campus. So there are all these little little things that built it up to sort of be this, this really special and, and, and different tournament that we hadn't seen in, in the prior two years. You know, the press was interesting. I am sick of listening to, would you beat them in the library? And the answer was yes. But I would also like to beat them on the basketball court. And I, I just felt like, it's fun to be the underdog, but I didn't think we were being taken quite as seriously as I would like, uh, like us to have been taken. We had Allison Feaster. She was basically the best player nearly in the country at the time, and I think people just didn't know it yet. Um, but our coaches did a really good job holding that at bay. They also did a nice job holding at bay all the discussions about the injuries to the Stanford players and keeping it really about us, but then changing the game plan which I thought was key, that we ended up practicing a triple team of Olympia Scott. And I think if you another, another All-American. Yes. Another All-American, yeah, exactly. Um, she was phenomenal. But uh, to, to take a risk, I mean, think about that risk. How many coaches do you know triple team one player when that entire team were probably all Americans in high school, right? It was a big risk and it, it was very effective in the end. And then um, going into the game, I don't remember much. It was a blur. Well, do you remember walking even into the stadium? You know, I, I remember walking into the stadium and just how loud it was. I, I The difference between, and, and we often did not play to a sold out Levides. So walking into a stadium with whatever it was, over 5,000 people, 6,000, whatever it was, I remember the volume. And there was a, I don't know if it was Star Wars, but their team came out to, you know, a very powerful pounding and the, the, the whole state, you know, the, everyone in the stands was pounding and clapping and there was just so much noise and especially as a guard you know we we needed to communicate and I just remember thinking well we're not in you know we're not in Kansas anymore <laughs> it was it was a little bit you know 
of one of these Hoosier moments, right? Where, you know, you had to put someone on your, your shoulders and make sure the basket was still 10 feet tall. It's, it's not often that Harvard is the underdog, you know, in, in all facets of the university, but but here we we certainly were. And I think having those two NCAA appearances in prior years helped with the nerves, helped with all of that. Certainly having Allison Feaster, I mean, the fact that we had the ability, the I mean, for me, it was four years to, to play with an athlete of that caliber. I mean, how fortunate we were. She, she changed the course of Harvard basketball. She changed all of our basketball careers um, with what she did at Harvard. And that game, I mean, I remember from the get-go, I don't remember very many details, but I think we had, what was the, the final score was 71-67. I'm pretty sure Allison had 35 of our points. Oh, at least. And the thing that people don't talk about enough with Allison Feaster, Yes, she was the leading point scorer in the nation, I believe, that year. But she, her defense was phenomenal. So her job was not just to score 35 points. It was also to defend primarily, I believe, Olympia Scott, the other All-American, <laughs> right? And so to be able to play both sides of the court, I just finished, I know I'm a bit late on this, but I've just finished the Michael Jordan series uh -huh. that just finished. And I thought to myself, well, that's what Allison Feaster did. She was just as good on offense as she was on defense. And then she really proved that in the Stanford game. And I, you know, I so enjoyed the actual game. I don't have a lot of tremendous individual memories, but I just remember the joy of it all. I remember looking over and seeing the crowd of Harbor people. And I was like, where did these Harbor people come from? We had a pretty big crowd and they were so into it. And even when we were up, it was still loud and exciting. And I think there was a tree running around, right? <laughs> and I just, it, there were, it was goofball and, and super fun. I know other people felt like it was, when is the other shoe gonna drop? I didn't feel that way in the game. I thought we were playing great. We were having a really good time and we weren't surprised. I think everyone else in the world was surprised, but really, really weren't surprised. You know, going back and watching this game has been talked up so much, right, over our careers. And it's one thing living through it and the game is a blur, but I remember going back and, and listening to something and one of the announcers during that game even said something to the effect of, oh, well, the Harvard team sure is enjoying it while it lasts, you know, as if <laughs> this isn't gonna last. But I think you're right. I think for all of us, it was just this, this is us. This is, I mean, Charlie, Allison Feaster has the nickname Charlie, but she couldn't be stopped. Everybody else really stepped up in terms of the rebounding. And I mean, let's fast forward to the end of the game, Susie. <laughs> you know what's so I mean, funny to me? This is my 15 minutes of fame and I've been basking in it for 20 years. You gotta love it. And this has always annoyed me a little bit that the shot at the end of the game is thought of as more important as the shot in the middle because every single point mattered, of course, right? Um, but I, there's some drama to it. I think we all love the drama. I, I think what I remember the most is I did not, this is bad, bad that I'm admitting this. I did not feel like the game was as close as it was. And if you had said to me that Stanford, I think went ahead in the second half, I would have said, no, they didn't. We led the yeah. entire game. We were totally in control. Yeah. I didn't have that feeling. I didn't have that feeling of, oh, no, we're down or it's over. I, it just felt like we were in, in the flow. And with regards to that last shot, I did know we were up by one. No, yeah, we were up by one. I hope I'm right on that. I think we were up by one. I and um, I remember Lisa dribbling one way and then coming back. And I slid down to the corner on the left side. Um, and I really don't like that shot. So I love three pointers. I'm not going to lie, but I'm not great at the angle all the way in the corner. It's my least favorite shot on the court. And yeah, you know, I didn't have much time to think about it. I do remember checking my feet to make sure I was behind the line <laughs> and letting it go. And it's all good. But at that moment, did I think we'd won the game? No, I didn't think it was the shot. I just thought, oh, I'm glad that went in. <laughs> All I remember about the very, very end of the game was we were at the foul line. Now, I couldn't tell you which Allison was there. It's either Allison Sainer or Allison Feaster. And I looked up and I thought, 
we've won. Like, <laughs> there's not enough time left. We've won. And it wasn't until like that final second that I realized it. The buzzer went off and then it was just the ju- just euphoria. Oh my gosh. I remember you like bawling, like just so emotional. Cause that's what it was just it was so emotional. Because we had well, finally come to the world that we were a basketball team. And and also you have to remember, I mean, that was our senior class. I mean, you had four people in, in your class of 99. We had we had five class, five people in the class of 98. And getting on that airplane for California, four of us knew those were going to be the last basketball games of our lives. And, you know, one of us. Alison Feaster was going to go off and have this amazing career through parenthood. Um, But for four of us, you know, I started playing basketball when I was five years old. And, you know, that was emotional. So to end your, I mean, I didn't, after we beat Stanford, I could have, I could have gone back to Cambridge. I didn't even (laughs) care about the Arkansas game, frankly. I didn't care. I was done. So to end your whole, I mean, if you're lucky enough to get to play in college and extraordinarily lucky enough to get to play for a team like this, to end it the way we did, it was magical. I mean, there are no other words um, that you can use. I just remember we were going crazy. We had so many parents, siblings. I remember my dad made it to Stanford and my mom and some siblings made it to my graduation and everyone felt <laughs> felt happy. But that, we had such a big crowd. I remember, I don't know if it was the lobby of our hotel, but it was all of us, alums, parents, press. And we had, you know, that was late for us. It was a three hour time difference. And we had to, another game to think about. No one cared. I oh, was stayed up. We were up. I don't think I went to sleep, to be honest with you. I don't, I mean, it just was one big party, um, as as we do, right? Harvard partiers. But it was it was joyful. I think it was joyful for the whole community. And that's one thing I love about Ivy League Sports. It's like when one team at Harvard wins, we cheer them all on because we're Harvard. And then I also think we also win for the Ivy League, which I think is the most fantastic league in, league in the country, right? And why? Because yeah. we are true student athletes. We have people like Kathy Delaney Smith who are there for 39 years. And I just think that it's the it's a really wonderful balance of athletics and academics and it sets you up for life. And gosh, if I could do it all over again, wouldn't you do it the exact same? <laughs> exactly. You know, and I think there's there's so much talk around how sports can be really community building. And that is absolutely how I would describe that, you know, all four of my my years at Harvard. But that senior year, going through that Stanford experience, I remember getting off the plane at Logan when we came back. And I, I have pictures. The, the, the varsity volleyball team greeted us. My roommates, some of our friends, we were both in Lowell House, a bunch of people from Lowell. Dean Harry Lewis, the dean of Harvard College, was at Logan Airport to greet us. I mean, there were banners, there were signs. Again, I I brought up, this wasn't an easy game for college students to watch at, at a school like Harvard, where you don't have cable in your dorm room. I don't know, Susie, if you remember, but there were four of us, the two of us, Sarah Brandt and Karen Grossman, we were all in Lowell House. And I don't know if the other houses did this the same way, but the JCR, the Junior Common Room, which is the only place in Lowell that had access to ESPN, did a screening of it. And the only reason I was aware of that is because you, we were each given VHS tapes when we got back of the other students watching us play the game. And what a party it was. And they had made signs for the four of us in that house, you know, with our names and pictures where people have signed them, my roommates. Like, I just remember it was like we all had won. And it wasn't just female athletes who greeted us at Logan. There were guys there, there. It was really everyone came together to celebrate this win. And 
honestly, whether it had been a math tournament or a dance tournament, I mean, I guarantee you there were people in that JCR who had never given a moment's thought to basketball, let alone women's basketball and to get so caught up in the moment. It was, I, we were lucky to have been a part of that. So special. And I, I actually had a professor who had given me a very hard time because there was a, uh, there was an exam that was going to be missed somehow because of athletics, which is very rare for Harvard basketball players. And he wasn't really that thrilled about giving special dispensation to a student. And when I came back into the classroom, this was a big class. There were at least 100 students in this class, lecture class. He had me stand up and said, I want to congratulate the Harvard women's basketball team and how exciting this was to bring the campus together. And everyone applauded. I was a little bit mortified and a lot bit just <laughs> proud and just think about that that we turned a bit of a grumpy old professor who didn't really like sports and then we come back and he's absolutely thrilled to be part of it all and how well we represented the university it was remarkable i'm actually uh days away from a major international move and i'm going through all my mementos and i just pulled out one of those posters uh... i kept it it just oh the memory it's just so good <laughs> doesn't get much better um it was really a special time and i'm i mean can't how lucky are we that we got to be there so lucky and you know all the talk of um gosh you know umbc right 20 years later the men t the the you know the men the men broke the record and I remember a lot of people asking me, are you so sad the record was broken? And I just thought that was such a crazy question. I mean, first of all, records are meant to be broken. But for those guys at UMBC to experience a quarter of the joy that we experienced, I wish this would happen, you know, every other year for, for student athletes to get to experience what we experienced. And UMBC was so gracious about acknowledging Harvard did this first. I love that it happened on the 20th anniversary. And I was thrilled and so excited for that team. And I hope it happens again. Oh, oh I, it's, <clears throat> it's the best. And I'm a Marylander, so yes, go UMBC. <laughs> Um, so I was excited for them too, because I, I choked up because when I saw the whole thing, because I was like, oh, I feel, you know how you feel, bottle it up. It's such a wonderful experience. Well, Susie, thank you. Great reconnecting with you. Thank all of you for taking the time out of this really bizarre time. We hope you and your families are safe and healthy. Um, but thank you for taking the time to walk down memory lane with us. Thank you to Kathy Delaney Smith, most of all, and to all of our teammates, class of 98, class of 99, ahead, below. Um, we feel, I think, we feel incredibly lucky to have been a part of this team, of this community, um, and we just cherish these friendships, this win, um, not just the Stanford game, but all the moments, the locker room moments, the laughters, alumni weekend. There are so many things that makes this team and this community so incredibly special. And um, I feel incredibly grateful. I know Susie does as well. So thanks for joining us and stay safe, everyone. Bye, everybody.